Okay, it's Roger of Mud Fossil University. This is Thunderbolts Projects. Very good guys. And uh, they're talking about the ancient gods and the stories that came down. And then they go into dragons, which is my area. So here they go. You were born from the womb of that very goddess to rescue the world from monsters that are also unexplained. Where's explaining them today? Okay, there's a claim that there is nothing that supports this. Perhaps there is no better example of an unexplained mythical theme than the serpent or dragon. This remarkable creature with origins in prehistoric times has no counterpart in the biological world. Yet it was remembered on every habitable continent and persisted across the millennia into modern times. Well, we can find amusement in the comic book versions of this monster. But nothing in nature today will explain the dragon's long flowing hair, its fiery breath, its beard, its twin whiskers, its wings or effusive feathers, or its global occurrence as twins, or its global association with lightning. Thousands of years after its prehistoric birth, the monster continues to linger in human fantasy. It will not go away. Okay, that's enough because the fantasy is over, my friends. And again, um, Thunderbolts Project, fabulous representation of what was spoken of in the past and now has been found. Okay, I'm just going to tell you right now, the world is made of creatures. This is Petra, that is muscle, and this is body tissue. And inside the treasury is leaking blood from, from bodily tissue walls. They went in here and excavated this when it was still soft. So they didn't have to do much to do this. They, they, and Well, I mean, it's obviously a lot of work, but they could easily do this with wooden tools and so forth and picks and you know their fingernails literally i'm serious this was it was very very pliable at one point right after the flood so i'm going to leave it at that because i have so much evidence i have mud i have three dna tests i have giants my own self i have no idea there's a little fingertip from one of the giants a three foot wide hand i have all the, the body everything's out there i have hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of mud fossils. Some of them are DNA tested, some of them are by CAT scan. They've all been verified. It's time to look at this for, for seriousness and wait till you see what you're about to see. Okay, my friends, they say there's no evidence for dragons. I'm going to make this quite simple. This seems to be a gigantic fish here in the desert. You can come up, you have Google, you can take a look at it. It seems to be it was being attacked by what appears to be a giant dragon. And this is the uh, giant dragon. And it has a type of a nose that is representative of the Marduk style dragon. I mean, there was a lot of different dragons. There's a feathered serpent on the east coast of the United States as well. But this is the stuff that this dragon um, spit out at the fish. And it is a representative of some very nasty looking um, snake venoms, really. It's very, very similar. And it came out of here, it comes out red and green and, and combines together and then, and then, it's, just, then it's all over. <laughs> now, let's take a look at the dragon's head. All right, there's the dragon's head. There's his nose. It's a funny looking nose. I agree. When I first saw it, I said, oof, crazy looking nose. But Marduk's dragon has the same looking nose. Now, 
this is that fluty looking stuff that runs down the side of the dragon you see in parades and all that business and the little flashy looking things now again this is the throat it's got to have a throat just like all animals have a throat and it runs way down there now what does that throat look like it first of all let's look at how it made this nasty toxin out of its come out of its throat here because it you can actually see how it mixed the red injectors are up here and the greens are down there or no the greens are whatever you can see them in here and they mix together when they come out and you get this green and red mixing together and then it gets really ugly and uh, and then then that's when it leaks all down onto the fish now very very toxic looking stuff here so now here we are the dragon's head we're running down the dragon's throat and this is the scales that are on the throat now all this stuff here was where his toxic stuff went out now so here we are going down the throat let's back out and look at so we get a good perspective of what we're looking at uh, it's dead obviously this is what's called the effluent of bodily fluids they seep out and they just leak into the surrounding areas any autopsy guy any um coroner fully understand and these are the colors he's going to see exact same colors it was a red brooded creature now the flutiness is the dragon stuff that's his throat and we'll see the scales in a second i don't know how long it's been here this is the this is what's run off of that body. Now, I don't know how long it's been there. We get a, a coroner and have him take a look at it because they understand this stuff much better than I do. Now, this is the way the dragon throat comes down. You just saw that we're zoomed in on this throat. Now, how, that throat is going to have to flex. So you can't just have a whole set of plates in there and they're just all welded together. That's why they're all separate, see? And in certain places, they're going to have different separations because they have different flexible ranges and I mean it's just fabulously built um, I, whoops as you go down the throat okay, you notice you see these chunk 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 that means he can bend and still have tremendous protection look at that isn't that fabulous absolutely amazing look at this that's the inside of his throat, I guess. And these are the scales. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows dragons have scales. Well, there's dragon scales. And they are in plates. And that gives him flexibility. See, this thing can, oh, well, he's got to move his knuckle around. And that's, that's how he does it. And it comes down, I mean, it's just amazing. The size of this creature. Now, there seems to be some kind of a deadly injury happened right here, a cut right across here. You got your black, which is the the um, vein blood, which has the, it's called Fe2O2. It's lost in oxygen. It's Fe2O3, which is arterial blood, but it's, his throat was cut. And this was a red blooded creature. That's what red blood is. And it just continues down his throat because he's got a long throat <laughs> and it goes into his stomach and I look through this whole thing I and it comes into his uh, you know you see all these different acids and stuff and the lungs and all that stuff is in here it's it's a gigantic creature and you see the size of it that's his body that's the size of the body all right and the legs are coming down here and that's the tail runs all the way out over here all the way really it's all part of that is the tail they had these real flashy tails and um, and all of this stuff is part of his body, all the way up here and everything. And I think he had wings. And uh, all of this red stuff running off was from the wings. And um, the tail, because he's come, coming down, 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 and here it is right here. That's where some more of the tail is. And that's the dragon's tail. And that's the runoff of the effluence of the body. And it just keeps going further. And all of this fluty stuff is, is dragon stuff. And uh, it's a it's a good sized creature, so uh, I suppose I'll leave it at that. But uh, there is absolutely uh, evidence for dragons.